So once the plant has been designed, built and carefully tested, it begins to operate. But in operation, it's necessary to ensure safety. And so there are a lot of arrangements taken to ensure the safety of an operating plant that we will see in the next uh, subparts. The first one being the operating rules. So the operating rules <coughs> assemble all the assumptions and requirements coming from the design and that uh, they should be complied with during uh, uh, normal operation. The operating rules cover, and we will see again here, the defense in depth principle. Uh, as prevention, this document is called the operating technical specification. For monitoring, there are some periodic inspection and testing. And in mitigation, there are the emergency operating procedures. Operating rules also include some rules about normal operation, radiation protection, environment surveillance, the organization of the operator and uh, on-site and off-site uh, emergency uh, uh, plans. So let's begin with the operating technical specification. There are sort of the highway codes for the uh, operator with uh, three main objectives. The first is to ensure that uh, the plant operate in, uh, inside the design basis and that uh, the importance uh, parameter are kept under control. And uh, just to give an example, when uh, we make the calculation of uh, loss of coolant accident and the increase in pressure and temperature of the containment, there is uh, an initial temperature considered in the calculation. Uh, for the uh, the containment, which in that case is uh, 50 degrees. So it's important that the normal operation to ensure that the temperature inside the containment remain uh, under 50 degrees, and uh, this is included in the uh, uh, operating specification. Uh, and another important aspect is to ensure the operability and uh, availability of, uh, of safety function. Some of them are uh, running permanently, they operate normally, but some of the others are on standby and it's important to check the, the condition for operability of all the safety function. The third of ob objective is to define the action to take in the event of uh, exceeding a safety limit, the safety parameters, or uh, <coughs> if there is uh, some unavailability of uh, safety system. and. Uh, in that uh, particular case, the, uh, if uh, one system is discovered or become uh, unavailable, usually there is a, a sort of grace time, uh, uh, which is uh, in the order of depending on, on the type uh, between one, one hour or several hours or sometimes in days. And if uh, the, the safety system is not put back in, in normal operation and uh, not become uh, again, available, the reactor should be uh, uh, shut down uh, at the end of this uh, grace period. The second uh, element of the uh, operating rules are the, uh, the periodic inspection and, and test. They are <laughs> used to test the operability and the design performance parameters of safety system and components which are in standby mode during normal operation. These tests are done depending on the system every uh, two weeks or every month or at every uh, outage uh, each year. They, these periodic inspection tests also serve to detect any drift in the performance parameters from the authorized range, even if uh, uh, the, 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 the set points are, are uh, complied with, uh, if there is an evolution of, of the parameters, this should be taken into account and correction should be made. For, <coughs> for passive, uh, passive system and passive component, these periodic inspections serve also to detect any potential degradation of the component uh, by such phenomena as corrosion, cracks, and uh, this is uh, what, what we, we call that, the in-service inspection. So the third uh, important elements of the, uh, uh, the operating rules are the uh, emergency uh, operating procedures, EOPs, like uh, as we call them. 
The first instance of a transient of an accident sequence are covered by automatic uh, action, so the, uh, the reactor scram or reactor trip and the safety system actuation. And so the first role of the operator is just to check the correct operation of this uh, automatism and to maintain control of the installation. And the emergency operating procedures allow the operator to diagnose the event and to take pre established action to take the reactor in a safe sh shutdown condition. Initial EOPs were event-oriented. That it was that is set for each design transient or design basis accident that were analyzed in the safety analysis report. Uh, some predetermined actions were uh, included in these uh, uh, EOPs. But uh, the experience shows that reality might be somewhat different and uh, the, the course of the, uh, the transient of the accident might be a little bit different of what has been assumed at the design stage. And they could also so could be a combination of events or failures that complicate uh, the, uh, the management of, of the plant. Um, but a, a few uh, finite numbers of physical parameters enables a physical characterization of the plant that correspond to a finite number of uh, corrective actions. And so from uh, these elements, a very important new emergency operating procedures were developed, which are called state-oriented. So with state-oriented procedures, the priority is no longer to diagnose the event that has happened but to diagnose the actual plant conditions of state through uh, the following parameters. The reactivity, the content of water in the vessel, the re uh, whether the residual power is uh, extracted, whether the, uh, the coolant system is working, the availability of steam generator, and the containment integrity. So, this the diagnostic of these uh, parameters is repeated periodically and allows the operator to adjust the type of action to be undertaken.